Yo guys, punk around another video, and like promised in the last one that I made, I said I was going to be making an in-depth guide about Thunder Fury, which is the new weapon that becomes available now that Phase 3 is right around the corner when Blackwing Lair releases. Now obviously Thunder Fury is becoming available, but that's going to be to a ridiculously small portion of the community. There's barely anybody across the globe that actually has two bindings right now. I think on my server in total, which is probably the biggest server, at least on North America, maybe globally as well. But from what I've heard, just word of mouth passing around, I think we have maybe like three people or two people total on the entire server who have two bindings. And I believe Asmongold's one of them. And then we there's another guy on Horde and the other one, I'm just, I really don't know. But I think two to three people on the server have two bindings. So that means on a server with tens of thousands of players there's only three people who are going to be getting thunder fury once blackwing Lair releases but if anything that just adds to the infamy it's such a ridiculously hard weapon to get and on top of that it's probably one of the most broken weapons in the entire game so in this video we're going to be covering the lore we're going to be talking about the weapon itself just what it does and the power behind it and also giving you an in-depth guide on exactly what you need to do the steps that you need to follow in order to attain it so that's the video let's get into it all right so firstly let's talk about the lore the lore of the weapon itself what it's all about why is this weapon specifically legendary and so tough to get why is there a story behind it more so than any other weapon in the game well it actually goes a lot deeper than you might think in fact it goes back to the dawn of creation of azeroth itself all that time ago the world was terrorized by the old gods and in servitude under the old gods were the elemental lords alakir neptalon therizane and of course Ragnaros. These were the four lieutenants to the old gods, and their job was to keep Azeroth in a constant state of mayhem, all the elemental lords warring against each other. Within the lore, it says that these wars raged on for five millennia, and eventually, by the end of it, Ragnaros ended up crushing Alakir with his hand of Ragnaros, the mighty hammer that a lot of you guys might be wielding out there today. Now, Alakir, who's the lord of air elementals, had an underling under him called Thunderon, Prince of Air, or Prince thunder on after Ragnaros struck down Alakir he sent his two lieutenants Baron Geddon and Gar to ambush Thunderan where Ragnaros feasted on the essence of the prince but Ragnaros was not able to fully consume Thunderan so instead what he did is the remnants of Thunderan's essence were stored away in two talismans and that's what we know today as the bindings of the Windseeker. One is held by Gar and one is held by Baron Geddon. They're the safekeeper of the talisman. So that's pretty much the backstory. And that's why those two specific bosses in Molten Core are holding those two legendary artifacts. And once you see the process of how you obtain Thunder Fury, it's all gonna make sense in connection to that story. So in the intro, I alluded to Thunder Fury being one of the most powerful weapons in the entire game. And this is not to be underestimated. So a weapon that you get the items to craft in molten core and then complete in blackwing lair is pretty much the best weapon throughout the entire expansion at least for tanks and honestly for an offhand for a lot of classes it's pretty much the best or at least close to the best for rogues and warriors as well and to be honest even if you have an alternative that might be better i mean why would you use any offhand weapon over a thunder fury it just doesn't make any sense the marginal difference is not worth losing the aesthetic and the infamy that the blade itself carries but it's pretty much a tank weapon and it's the best tank weapon and i just said that it's the best tank weapon all the way through vanilla but what if i told you that it even surpassed that in fact the next expansion which is the burning crusade all the way up to level 70 and into black temple thunder fury still remains at least situationally the best weapon that a tank can use that sounds crazy right but it's definitely true in fact kungan who was the main tank for nihilim back in the day most of the kill videos that you see of them getting world firsts from back then until way way later on he always used thunder fury when i was playing in the burning crusade back then we raided through all of black temple and our main tank was called thunder fury and he had a thunder fury that he used throughout all of Black Temple. The beauty of this weapon is in the proc. It basically has an on-hit effect that works like a chain lightning. It'll do 300 base damage to the target that you're hitting and then chain to a bunch of targets around it going 300, 300, 300, 300, 300 onto everything. If you think about how warrior tanks kind of struggle to AoE tank without the right little knickknacks and very strong mechanics, well, Thunder Fury compensates for a lot of that. And if you're a great tank who's already able to AoE tank and you have like force reactive disc, grenades, sapper charges, things like that, well, pair that with Thunder Fury proccing all over the place all the time and you're basically a paladin tank. But another reason why it was so powerful even into the Burning Crusade is that once you get to BC, elemental shamans are a really strong source of dps and so are enhancement shamans and boomkins as well actually all of these classes 
classes do nature damage. And what's interesting about the combination with nature damage and thunder fury is every time that it chains to a different target and does that 300 damage, it envelops the target in a whirlwind effect that leaves a debuff on them, increasing the damage that they take from nature spells. So you'd have your main tank go in, his thunder fury would proc on everything, and then shamans would be casting chain lightning and doing increased damage onto all the targets that were affected by the blade. This weapon is broken, and when I was speed clearing Nax Ramus and all of the raids back in the day, the moment our main tank got thunder fury and we'd have him with full world buffs and stuff, even with massive ignite ticks, it was hard to pull threat off of him. It's just such an insanely good weapon in terms of TPS, either single target or AoE. It's by far the best tanking weapon, and nowadays you'll see a lot of dual wield tanks that'll be using it in their offhand or even in their main hand. So imagine being a fury tank with two weapons and one of that weapon is thunder fury. This is really where it creates a distinction. You're either a tank with TF or you're a tank without, and that's why you have to give it to your main tanks. It's just imperative when running a guild, you give the bindings to the top tank in your guild. I would never even consider giving it to a rogue unless maybe it was like the third or fourth binding and we already had like two solid tanks who had it. But that's pretty much why the weapon is so good. All right, cool. So you get it. TF is busted for a main tank, but how do you get it? Let's quickly go over that process. So the first thing that you need to do, obviously, is the hardest part. It's get the bindings. You need to clear Molten Core until you get both bindings. And like we stated earlier, the protectors of the Talisman are Gar and Baron Geddon. So each one respectively drops their own binding, the left and the right. But you can get the quest with only one artifact out of two. So essentially, once you get your first binding is when the process starts. You'll accept a quest. Once you start, you're going to go out to seek High Lord Demetrian. He's a magical character in the northwest of Silithus, right near the little elemental spot, which of course makes sense. And his entire point in life Life, his goal is searching for the bindings. His master is Thunderan, who is the Prince of Air, and he's trying to free him. Once you travel to Silithus and talk to High Lord Demetrian, he's going to give you the Vessel of Rebirth, which is going to start a second quest. This quest asks you to get both bindings, so you have to get the essence that's stored in the artifacts from those two bosses, from the two guardians. And on top of that, you're going to have to get the essence of the Fire Lord. So remember during the lore when we spoke about Ragnaros absorbing Thunderan's essence? You're going to have to go defeat Ragnaros and get that essence that he took from Thunderan. Keep in mind when you have the quest, the essence of the Fire Lord is 100% chance to drop. So if you have one binding, you can get this in preparation before phase three. Someone in my raid got it last week. So you have both bindings and you have the essence of the Fire Lord. You have all the encapsulated power of Thunderan, but it doesn't end there because obviously that would be way too easy in the context of vanilla. On top of this, you're going to need to get 10 Elementium bars. A lot of you guys are miners out there and you're like, what the hell is an Elementium bar? I know how to smell Thorium. What Elementium. It's something new. So in Blackwing Lair, there's little goblin engineers all over the place, like on Veilstraz and the ones that are near the Alchemy Lab and stuff on the later stages. These guys drop Epic Ore, which is called Elementium Ore. Your guild's gonna be hoarding these as much as possible. Later on, the instance before the final two Black Drakes, there's three Wormkin elites, and hiding at their feet is a little goblin. This goblin is not just a random NPC who's there for no reason. He's the one who teaches you how to smelt Elementium bars from the Elementium Ore that you're getting from the other goblins but he's hostile, so what you need to do is have a priest mind control him. Then once mind controlled, he has an ability where he can teach how to smelt Elementium to a friendly player. So the priest who's mind controlling him can train how to smelt Elementium or to the miners in your raid. A really interesting RPG element that's I think lacking from today's game. So now you can make the bars, but to make the bars is pretty expensive. In order to smelt one bar, you need one Elementium or 10 Arcanite bars, which right there is gonna cost you easily six to seven, maybe even 800 gold. I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking on my server they're like 50 55 right now yes but once bwl releases they're going to go up in price so if you have thunder fury you might want to buy them now while they're cheap you're also going to need a fiery core and three elemental flux you need to craft 10 of these bars the elementium or your guild is going to provide you with they drop in blackwing lair all the time so basically what you need to do is get 100 arcanite bars hopefully your guild is going to help you with that it's going to cost you a minimum of 5,000 gold now once you've gathered all of the materials you're going to head back to silithus and talk to high lord demetrian you're going to hand the quest in and at this point he's going to summon Thunderon, the Prince of Air. And this is a raid encounter. Back in the day, it was pretty difficult and you probably wanted to have a full raid, but nowadays people can probably easily 20 man it, no problem. It's not really a hard fight whatsoever. He has a couple win mechanics. I think he knocks you in the air. For the most part, it's a super easy boss fight. And then you're going to loot the dormant wind kiss blade off of him, which is going to start another quest. But this quest is super easy. All you have to do is give it to the person who has the Thunder Fury quest completed. He's going to go talk to Demetrian, hand it in, and then boom, Demetrian's going to 
turn it into Thunder Fury, you've obtained the weapon itself. You now have the best in slot tanking weapon for all of vanilla, and then if we get into TBC, for all of TBC pretty much. So there you go, that's the video, covering I think all elements of the weapon, the lore, the weapon itself, and how to get it. There's a couple legendaries in vanilla, there's Atiesh, Hand of Ragnaros, and Thunder Fury, but TF in my opinion has to be the greatest one out there. There's just something about it, something about the process, the weapon, the way it procs, the spell animation, the on hit animation, it's just something special. And there's a reason why people even to this day in retail are constantly going back to farm it on their characters. And I heard something about in the next expansion that they were going to let you transmog it. So I guess if you play retail, look forward to that. Now going forward, a lot of your guilds are probably going to stop doing Molten Core entirely, or they might have a small dedicated group and you might not have to go. Some guilds might honestly do 20 man Molten Cores once people get really geared. But MC is always going to be available. And if you're a tank and you want to get it for yourself, you might want to consider leading your own Molten Core runs and reserving the bindings for yourself and doing it for the next couple months, eventually you might get the weapon yourself. It's definitely possible. In fact, I've actually seen a good amount of people on private servers obtain it by themselves by pugging. So if that's what you want to do, get out there and start grinding. Now, if you guys like this video, and of course, if you want to see more like it, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill soldiers. Hit the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a new video straight out of the render oven. And with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.